In an age where digital streaming and curated playlists are king, does your album song order even matter anymore? This topic has many music industry professionals divided, and we would like to share our two cents. Hey, how's everyone doing? From Bridge Atlantic, I'm singer-songwriter Marcin Cinderella from Canada. And I'm music web designer Ross Parva smith from Scotland. And you're watching B-Sides, a show empowering musicians with knowledge and advice. If you're new here, subscribe. So yeah, we're going to be talking about track listings. I think a good place for us to start is really how people are listening to music today, which is streaming and discovering artists a lot of the time through playlists. Versus um, many years ago where you'd pick up an album you know, either on vinyl or CD, put it in and start playing it from the beginning of the album. And I think flow was really important because everyone was used to listening to an album from front to back most of the time. I mean, maybe you quickly, you know, scanned or put it on the track you wanted to listen to. But for the most part, I think people were pretty much used to I, I mean, we completely forget about cassette tapes here. Cassettes were a thing too. And eight oh, tracks, yeah, you have no choice. With yeah, the point with is them. you just particularly actually even more so with cassette tapes, you just put it in and unless you can, like, you have to fast forward, rewind, but you found, like, you just listen to the track ordering. And back then, actually, with vinyl and cassettes, it was very much important to have the side A flow and the side B flow. That's a whole other thing we can get into. But, you know, um, you know, is the idea of having that same flow kind of mimicked for, um, on side B that you had on side A, uh, which we'll get into in a minute. You know, and then with the advent of uh, CDs being just one continuous flow, that whole A, B kind of... Uh, left uh, uh, front and back side kind of lost the the importance uh, a bit although because of the um, resurgence of vinyl that's kind of come back into play so there's a lot to consider here with track order but before you consider it is the question is do, does it matter <laughs> to even consider it so my my thinking is yes it does still matter because despite the fact that people are listening to a lot more playlists and maybe they're not listening to full albums as much as they were previously there are still a lot of people who are listening to albums in the way that, that you've just described, which is from the start to the end. So I think for that reason, yeah, you should still consider them. Absolutely. Yeah, you and I are two people who still listen to albums. But I think what's different now is is um, I think the beauty of playlists and these um, different streaming platforms that allow people to discover you uh, through recommendations and playlists, all that kind of thing, is that people are being discovered that never would be heard otherwise you know, based on algorithms and a whole bunch of crazy things like that. Um, but the idea is, in, in that case, it doesn't matter. No, of course not. You know, you just you just being, you just heard on a playlist. But the idea is that when people are actually interested in your music based on, you know, hearing you in a playlist or just discovering you on social media or just seeing you at a show or they're already a fan, the flow matters. Because, I mean, I know for me, and I and judging from statistics and, and reading a bunch of articles on this, most people still go and click the first track mm -hmm. uh, on an album. You know, um, of course, the single is probably going to have the most listens. Uh, you know, using Spotify as an example, you know, um, even if the first song is not a single, you'll notice it has more plays than all the yeah. other non-single songs on an album. So people are still listening from the top. And as an artist, um, I've always been very i've always seen the importance of track order you know so much so there's oftentimes if you hear a song out of track order you're kind of like oh i was yeah, it was it feels weird next song it? was supposed to come in yeah, yeah. <laughs> it becomes you know the, the flow of the whole album which is kind of beautiful of course the song should be able to stand on its own but you know it is part of an album as well that's why oftentimes i always felt weird when bands put out a greatest hits album mm -hmm. right i always felt mm -hmm. weird hearing those songs out of order so, you know, when, when a new fan or an, old, an existing fan or whatever goes to listen to your work, there is a way to present it. You know, you wouldn't just shoot a bunch of scenes for a movie and throw them together. It has to make sense. Of course, particularly in a movie, there's obviously a, a strong narrative, but there should be somewhat of a narrative on an album too. Not necessarily a traditional narrative, but just a feeling of, of movement, you know? Uh, we can definitely dive into tips. I mean, there's no right or wrong, but usually you st you start off with some stronger songs in the beginning of of your album, and you let people have a bit of a uh, of a break, and then you know you lift them back up. But again, that can differ. If you're mostly a quieter artist, you're probably going to start you know off with your main sound and maybe kick it up a little bit. You know, an example of this is you know some folk artists who might do one or two kind of rock songs. They're probably going to put that a little bit later in the album. Otherwise, I feel like you kind of trick the the listener. You want mm -hmm. the listener to feel like they're getting into the album to mostly what that artist is about. You know what I mean? So the first few tracks should really be, how do I want to present myself um, to the world? And that was actually a tip I got from Joe Cavallo. That's a, a guest that we've had on Bridge Atlantic in an interview we did a while back. 
And uh, I remember talking to him years ago and he was like, the first few songs kind of define you as an artist. You know, you can do many different things on an album, but the first few songs kind of give people a taste of what you're mostly about. Uh, so that's something maybe to keep in mind. Yep. I would say that as, as someone who listens to a lot of music and finds a lot of music through Spotify, for example, when I find an artist that I want to listen to, I click on, you know, on them and then the, the latest album and I will listen to, you know, starting from track one. And hopefully if you keep my interest, then I will listen all the way through to the end. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, those first three or four songs, you, you're right. They do kind of define who you are to a new listener in particular who's still trying to sort of form an opinion of, of who you are. And I think if you can really capture the kind of the best of you early on, and also if you can capture like a, a small range of what you do within those first few songs without being too jarringly diff like different. Yeah. Then yeah. Like that's maybe just, the perfect thing. Yeah. If you've got a, sl if you've only got one like ballad on your album, definitely throw it later in the album. You know what I mean? Typically that's what you do. Um, I mean, again, there's no right or wrong. You break these rules if you want to. If it, you know, at the end of the day, all this is just they're just suggestions. You know, there's articles online to help you with this, but at the end of the day, it's about following your gut instinct, which is something that's somewhat of a theme on this show for the last three plus years, um, more than three plus years. Is is just following that that gut feeling and your instinct on what feels right. You're gonna know if something just doesn't feel right. Yeah. You know, and and it, so that that's something you've got to follow. Definitely get some um, some advice from people around you. If they if they don't say anything, they're like, yeah, that's great. Then it's probably okay. You know what I mean? If if someone definitely tells you, well, that was a little bit weird, I mean, unless that's what you're going for, it's probably maybe reconsider that. You know, but you know, going back to what I said earlier, though, there is still that side A and side B. That because of the the resurgence of vinyl, you do want to maybe consider this a little bit. You know, for me, it's kind of like side A and side B should be great, but there's definitely a flow that you should have because even if you're listening to something completely in full, you still want it to have a movement. You know what I mean? So you can't just start off strong and then let the rest of the album fall flat. Um, you can't, you know, you you want to spread things out a little bit. Oftentimes people will spread out their singles. I think Tegan and Sarah did this great on the con. Literally every three songs is one of their singles pretty much. And it works really well because a lot of the other songs are very um, unique and, and uh, experimental a bit. And I think um, one of my favorite albums, by the way, if anyone's if anyone wants to know that, but you know, it really gives you a chance to hear something familiar and at something a bit more digestible, I guess, um, or pop friendly, and mixed in with some things that maybe take a bit more uh, are not as accessible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So spread them out a little bit, um, but definitely start off strong and uh, end with a bang. A a whether that's a soft song or a really hard, you know, hitting song, start with end with something that's going to leave people feeling like satisfied, like that was a great album. Yeah, or ideally something that makes them want to hit play again. Uh, mm. you know, listening to albums on repeat, like that's, that's awesome. If, if you, if you get to the end of an album and you think, I really want to hear that whole thing again. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. Well, besides, besides the tips I'm giving here, Russ, do you, like, what else do you think is important when considering the track order? You know, obviously there's tempo and key, you know, yeah. what do you, what do you think we should be considering? I mean, I think contrast is a good thing, but, but not when, it, when it's like jarring. So mm -hmm. I think like we've touched on this ourselves, you know, kind of mixing the sort of more full band type stuff or anything that's a little bit heavier with something that's acoustic uh, or a bit on my quieter. albums. Yeah. Yeah. On my so I think, you know, yeah. you want to definitely have a balance um, where I guess where people aren't really sure what to expect next, but they're not hit with something that they think, oh, that's not really a what I want. I think I think next. a word you use sometimes. You don't want things to be samey. <laughs> you yeah, don't want it to just sound like it's that, uh, three, there, four there songs are, back to back. Yeah, there are albums where I found that if they just put track nine where track four was, or you know, mix things up just a little bit. Yeah, it would have broken things up because there are some albums that I do find get to the point where you're halfway or just over halfway in, and it just all starts to sound a bit the same. Yeah, which is not what you want. You can have songs that sound similar. Just spread them out. Like some bands just have a sound. All the songs typically sound the same, not in a bad way, but they just have a sound that may be not as important, but still, still spread out tempos keys you know just let that overall vibe shine and give people feel like they're moving through a story you know it doesn't matter what kind of artist you are it still matters wholeheartedly i truly believe that it matters to ross and i it still matters just as much as album artwork still matters just as much as your songs matter the way it's presented still matters yep absolutely and i think we're going to wrap this one up there uh, we'd <laughs> love to hear from you so please do leave us a comment and let us know your thoughts on the subject 
If you want more from us, you'll find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to pick up one of our shirts, visit our website and use the coupon code BTAROX to receive 20% off your order. This episode was brought to you by Social Surge, your source for social media marketing and online music promotion. Check them out because they do our us. They keep the show alive. That's right. And if you would like to sponsor the show and become an official bridger, join us on Patreon from as little as a dollar per month. Not only will you be able to showcase your band or brand to our amazing audience, but your support will allow us to bring you weekly videos here at Bridge the Atlantic. That's right. All right. Take care. See you next time. Bye.